Hello, welcome once more. So in today's video, we'll be discussing or we'll be chatting briefly about tips and strategies for preparing for CELPIC exam. This presentation is based on my own personal experience of taking the CELPIC exam. I just recently wrote the CELPIC exam and I had um, CLB 10 and 11 and I thought it was going to be helpful to share with others um, the strategies and tips that really helped me towards achieving a high score beyond CLB 9 plus. Okay, before I start, um, I've decided to separate the videos into four different segments. So for the whole of January, I will upload all of the videos. The first is going to be the listening test. The second will be the reading, the third will be the writing, and then the final one will be speaking. I just wanted to also include the disclaimer here that this video is not sponsored by Celpic or any other organization. This is based on my own desire to share strategies that can help and support anyone else that is struggling and thinking about how or what ways to prepare for their sons towards having a good grade score. Okay, so we'll start um, by I start by saying that CELPIC actually means Canadian English Language Proficiency Test for Immigration. There are two reasons why people write the CELPIC exam. Um, some people write it for immigration purposes and for professional designation, especially for professional bodies that actually need you to write an English proficiency test here in Canada. So for the immigration aspect of it, some people um, write the English test for express entry and also for citizenship. So there are four modules that are being covered, especially if you're writing the CELPIC general exams. The first is the listening, followed by the reading. Um, afterwards, you have the writing, and then the speaking is the last aspect of the test. Okay, why am I talking about it? Even though I had mentioned it here, but I have, I have my picture here, which I included uh, where I was preparing for the exam. This is to say you can actually pass the exams. All you just need to do is to study, know the strategies and to prepare for the exam ahead of time. I think it took me three to one month to prepare for the exam, but I had some breaks in between and there were days that I wasn't studying. And um, some days I had six hours study or less. So that's not to say that that was what I was doing morning, afternoon, and night for the whole one month, no. So if you're determined and if you have the time, you can actually prepare for the test and write it in two weeks, one, one week, um, three weeks, three months. I mean, everybody's... Um, proficiency level is different. By the time you start practicing and you learn the strategies, you find out or figure out what you actually need in terms of prepare, preparing for the exams. Um, whether, um, say for instance, your you need to improve more and include more words in your vocabulary. We'll discuss more of this when we get to the speaking and the writing test because you want to show that you have a diverse vocabulary because you don't want to keep repeating words. Okay, I, dig I digress at this point. Let's go back to what I have on my slide. So um, what do you need to know about the CELPIC exams in general? So it's computer-based and their free and paid material available on their website and on their YouTube channel. Um, the price for the test is 280 Canadian dollars plus tax. And then this exam is being um, written within three hours in one sitting with your computer, a scrap paper and pen is being given to you. You sit down and write it for the three hours. So once the time start counting, once you start the listening exam, you've entered in the password for your particular test in front of you or on the desktop, the exam has started. So you wouldn't have to take a break. You wouldn't have to stop. Like even if you need to use the washroom, your time will still keep going. The only thing is that there exam coordinator who will be in the exam hall would just go ahead and put in the code and they, that would um, blank off your screen 
And once you come back, you put in the code and continue. So I know that SOPIC, it's currently in countries like Canada, US, UK, India, I think China, but I know that they are not in all countries. So if you're considering taking the exams, you can go ahead and check on their website locations and, and countries that they have centers at and see if you can go to those center or find a suitable center that is closer to you to write the exam. If you're in Nigeria, thank God. <laughs> um, Selpik now has a new center in Nigeria, but it's at Victoria Island. So for the exam format, there is Selpik General and Selpik um, listening and speaking, that's Selpic LS. So the difference between the two is that the general has four modules, while the LS has um, just two modules. So for the LS, most people write it basically for, um, or write it in preparation for their Canadian citizenship exams or part of their Canadian citizenship requirement. I can't really speak to that because I haven't just written just the two, but I think if you're studying for um, the Canadian, like meeting up with the Canadian citizenship requirements, some of the information that I will share for the listening and speaking will be very useful to you. Okay, for the listening tests, um, what do you need to know in terms of format, um, examination format, the strategies, and other uh, any information relating to the listening. The listening is usually the first exam you start with. It, it proceeds from listening to speaking, from speaking, you, oh, sorry, <laughs> I made a mistake. It's from listening to reading, reading to writing, and then finally you have the speaking aspect. So the time that is allocated for the, um, the listening session is between 47 to 55 minutes. I mean, the timing is different for everyone because at the center, you might be more than five writing the exams. Uh, it's possible that you can have 47 minutes, the person close to you might have less time or have more time, like say 50 or 55 minutes. And bear in mind that there are questions that are unscored, even though there are 38 questions, there are questions that might be unscored. So you wouldn't even know which questions will be scored or which questions are not graded. So you just have to listen and put in your best effort in all questions. I know I've I've actually heard it. I, I'm not sure if it's during the webinar or during um during one of the live sessions that I attended, but I've also heard that sometimes when you have difficult questions your grades are, are, are weighted higher in, in a way. Um, I had um, difficult questions when I wrote the listening test. At some point, I was like, am I going to pass this exam? But thankfully, and thank God I passed. Uh, but the questions were a bit tricky and difficult. So it's important that you pay attention and you give it your best. Um, but honestly, I'm wishing you guys um, all the um, I'm wishing you guys good luck and success as you prepare for your SELPIC exam. The SELPIC exam, the listening test, has six sessions with different formats. So in taking notes, you need to prep your prep the different sessions based on the format of the exam. So I will discuss this later and I'll show you um, how I arranged um, my scrap paper or how I arranged each questions in terms of my draft on the scrap paper on the exam day. So I'll start with the resources. There is the CELPIC webinar. So usually CELPIC organizes webinar every month for those that are taking the exams um, is listed on their website, the timing, and then the type of um, webinar they're organizing for every month. So there's the CELPIC Writing Pro, and the target is for those that actually want to have CLB5, I would think CLB5 and above. Why the Writing Pro is for those that are actually aiming for target 9+. plus. So if you're 
if your target is nine plus, you might have to attend the nine plus webinar. But I would say if you really want to do well and you really want to learn more about the test and how you should prepare, I would advise you attend both, both um, webinars. I attended both and it was quite um, insightful and very, very useful towards my preparation. There are informations that, that are a bit elementary that they actually introduce at target five, but I find that it helps you to improve more when you compare with target eight, sorry, target nine plus. So I think taking both webinars is important. So you're taking target five, not because you want to have CLB five, but because you want to build the knowledge and to learn more about the test and the format to help you to get to CLB target nine plus. So your focus will now be on strategies. After learning about target five, it's more like an introduction. Now, getting into Target 9 Plus webinar is to help you to say, okay, this is what will really distinguish my grade. This is what will distinguish me as a 9 Plus um, candidate as opposed to a 5 Plus. Because even during the, um, oh no, I made a mistake. This is supposed to be the listening pro. I have writing pro here. Sorry, I have um, writing pro here instead of listening pro. I really apologize for this mistake. But um, just attend both webinars in essence. And if you check the calendar and you already have a date and they don't have a date for, they don't have a time for that particular time that you are actually looking out for, then I would say go ahead and listen to their old recordings of those live um webinars that they hosted earlier okay so aside from the selpic webinar there's actually selpic youtube channels so you can look at the selpic live and under the selpic live they usually analyze the exams the individual questions they talk about the strategies there there are even situations or they've also been like live sessions where they've had like some experts coming while i was preparing for the exams so i usually check once they have like a live coming up uh, or live stream i just turn on the notification that way i'm informed and i actually attend so aside from the webinar and the youtube channel resources there are also free and paid materials like ebook, practice test, um, I think books on idiom, acceleration program. There are lots of different um, resources that you can actually use to prepare for the exam. I use the ebook and I made use of all the free materials that were available. It was two days or three days to the exam that I actually bought the paid um, material one of the tests that has just three sets of um, the different tests for all the four modules. So I practiced with that, um, the three tests that they had available. I practiced consistently for the three days with those exams and I was comfortable enough to just go into the exam and write and pass. All right, let's go over to the listening score chart. Um, compared to other tests that would have like different criteria that will be used in ranking, for instance, coherent, listenability, and other criteria that they use. We'll also get to that when we're discussing the speaking, reading, and writing. Um, but under the listening test, you'll find that if you have, if your score, if you score 38, 35 to 38, you're within um, the bound with 10 to 12. If you score between 33 to 35, you are between bandit 9. So, I mean, this guide is important that you have it and you look at it as you're practicing and as you're preparing for the exams. Just use it to correspond and to look. When you score yourself, what level are you at? If, for instance, you write one of the tests and you had 30, so 30 will be CLB 8. Now, what you need to find out is what are the areas in the six components of this listening um, test that you need to work on, that you need to improve on? Or is it that time management, you're not able to manage your time properly? Like you need to identify what are the challenges during your practice um, 
practice test at home that will help you to ensure that you get higher CLB while you're practicing. I mean, it wouldn't be the the final result, but it's just helping you to prepare towards having a high score, especially if you're trying to prepare for um, CLB 10 and above. Okay, other strategies and other tips that I have is practice, practice, practice. I cannot overemphasize practicing. You don't need to take long notes when you're trying when you're listening. The most important thing is that you're using shapes, abbreviation, figures, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, just try to use those to remember things. But remember, it's important for you to listen and focus. If um note taking is going to take more of your time, just use abbreviation shapes, figures, numbers as I suggested, but pay attention. It's very, very important. And if you think you've missed something out while listening, don't worry about it, just keep going. Or if you think that the speakers are saying something or they are, um, there was a word that was mentioned that you didn't understand, just keep going. Make sure you're listening and the um, you have, um, you are fully focused for the exam. So, for instance, at some point when I was practicing for the test, I had to look for noisy areas <laughs> to actually sit down and practice because I knew that during the exam, there will be lots of people or there will be other people at the exam. So you might still be in the writing test. Someone has proceeded to the speaking um, session of the exams and that can be distracting. So I tried as much as I can to uh, practice in a, in a very quiet area. And I also looked for a busy area to sit down and study. That way I'm training myself to learn to be focused and to listen. Time is very, very important. Um, with the listening tests, they're not repeating anything. Like, let's say, for instance, you have a particular question. Nobody's going to repeat that question twice or more. You only listen to that question once and you proceed to answer the question. So it's important for you to use your time. And it, how you how how will you be able to improve, like, your listening, listening abilities? You can actually do that by listening to news or podcasts. I used to um, listen to the news, like different Canadian um, channels, like CP24, CBC News, and the rest of them. I used to listen to the news because I knew that there was an aspect of the exam you'd be tested with news item, but also because most of the speakers are going to be like Canadian or North American native speakers. So I wanted to be able to know and to hear from them. So it's not easy for, it's not hard when I'm preparing for the exams to say, oh, okay, this the, their accent or the way they speak is quite different from what I'm used to, or I can't even understand. Um, another podcast or one of the podcasts that I actually used and I would recommend is the Can Learn English podcast. It was quite informative and I learned so much about Canadian culture, sports, people. It, it's quite an interesting podcast, but feel free to try other podcasts or other like news um, channels or broadcasting communication companies but do whatever works for you. But seriously, I think it's good for you to start listening to um, native speakers way ahead of time before you go into the exam. So for the exams, you will get questions that are general or their inference or specific information questions. So when, when you see a question that is a general question, it's more like it's just a general idea of a particular um of, of a particular thing they are asking. If it's inference, it's some like like the word inference, they want you to infer to be able to give an answer to that question. Why the question type for specific information is they are looking for something specific. There's something that they are looking for and they need an answer from you. Um, in answering the question, try to use elimination method in areas that you feel like, oh, I don't really know the answer. So what I did when I got into the exam, case, uh, exam hall, I got like a plain sheet of paper like this. I had A, 
B, C, D. And then for every question, I will just eliminate quickly, quickly. Like I was just, I was just answering and eliminating quickly and I selected the answers. So they will give you a scrap sheet of paper. Nobody's going to grade it. Even if your scrap sheet of paper is so messy at the end of the exam, it's fine. But try as much as you can to use your scrap paper. Another thing I'm going to say is, please, this is your mouse. So another thing I was going to mention here was, you see this mouse, please and please, if you can, after you just selected start, just leave it. For me, I just left it and kept on moving. I mean, every for everybody to hit each his own, right? But you see, pressing, pressing, you won't even know when you've skipped an exam if you're not paying attention. And you can't go back. So once you skip an exam or once you answer and you go forward, you can't go back. Even like, for instance, if I answer number one and I still have time, I don't go, I don't move forward. Brother, what I will do is I'll make sure my answer is correct. Then I will use my scrap paper to prepare for the next session, especially if I'm, a, I'm getting introduced to a different test format for the listening test. Another thing you should, um, I mean, I've talked about this is to attempt the practice task. Um, and okay, yeah, yeah. So this one is at the beginning of the test, they'll give you the practice task. Please try as much as you can to practice. It's just one question, answer it. Now, that will help you to understand. Can you really hear with your headphones? Is it working properly? Can you even speak to it and they can hear you? You want to test these things at the beginning of the exams before you continue. Okay, so this is the breakdown of what I have in my notes. And I would acknowledge that some of these things I've mentioned here and the information I'm sharing here is based on the things I learned while listening to the webinars or like the live sessions on YouTube and also through personal practice. But for this note, like part one is listening to a problem solving, like problem solving or listening to a problem question. So you know that one person has a problem and needs a solution. Usually there are two people that are involved in this test. One would be a woman or a man. So you don't know whether <laughs> the first person will be a man or the best, second person would be a woman. So instead of saying, for me, instead of writing on my on the scrap paper, man or woman, I just go ahead and have it as problem and solution. So if, for instance, the person that has the problem is a woman, I'll just come and say woman. <laughs> and then if the person that has the solution is a man, I'll just put man. So the conversation is divided into three parts. So for this conversation, there are, there are three parts of the um, conversation. I think I missed um, including this. So aside from this first um, column that I have, I will have two additional columns to accommodate the three different sessions that will be discussed here. So apologies, I missed it out. Um, if I either, if I have, if I am able to create a template for this, I would make the adjustment. The second part is listening to daily life conversation. Um, for this one, there are two speakers, just like the previous one, one person and one woman. And the, this one, the speakers might not necessarily know themselves compared to this one that the speakers who know themselves is it's um, less inf um, less formal. They are just talking about daily things or things, let's say, like, it's just general things. You can get, let's say, for instance, a test where they are just talking about life at their workplace or maybe a particular challenge someone is having at home or even a couple that are preparing for vacation and they are considering their options. So this has to do with daily conversation in general. For this particular one, you're listening for information. So let's say, for instance, I go to the store and I'm looking for a way to navigate to I-7, which has um, the distilled water at Walmart. 
and not just the distilled water, I'm looking for the two liters. Now, in, since I'm listening for information, right, the speaker, who may be a man or woman, depending, might be telling me, oh, turn left, turn right, when you get there, look down. So that's like information that the person is, is um, giving me. So you have to listen to find out the details. What is the subject that they're talking about or what, what information is this person giving to this person? Did this person respond? So that's what why you have it in two columns. So column A, you're actually putting the response that the, um, the first person is talking about. And then in column B, you're putting the information for, column, uh, for the second person. So that would help you to distinguish this person said this and this person didn't say it, and this other person is giving this particular information. So for the part four, you're actually listening listening for news item so under this we have five w's we have the who what when why is one person that is speaking is a conversation so you have to really pay attention um for the fifth one this has to be a video clip so here it's listening to a conversation so you're listening to a conversation so there, there are three people it might sometimes it can be two men and one lady or two ladies and one man like but they're discussing about maybe a personal challenge or something related to the workplace they can be discussing about anything any subject right but bear in mind that there might be someone that would disagree or two people that would disagree and one person is saying a different thing so you need to remember and you need to take up note of the area of disagreement, you need to take note of the person's dressing, the tone of voice, the person's appearance. Like, you just need to observe as you're listening and note it down. It's okay if you miss out things, but in this particular um, segment, which is the part five, I usually would have five columns when I was practicing. And with um, this um, format, it was easier for me when I got into the exam once they were reading the instruction because I was already um, used to some of the instructions. I listened, but I used my scrap paper to, to actually um, draw out my draft so it's easier for me to prepare for the exams and to answer the question. All right, so part C, it's it's still like we're still talking about the same question, but this time around we're in part six, we are listening for viewpoint. So here they are going to be talking about um, a subject and the person is giving us views. So it, there's information here. So you, as you're listening, there will be a point where the person is giving, you know, I, um, this is the advantage, this is a disadvantage. Or the person is actually giving additional information. So you, you should be able to know this is what the person is introducing. And then in between the conversation, the person might actually introduce the fact that this opinion, let's say, for instance, Dr. B has this opinion, as opposed to Dr. C, that thinks this way. So you actually have to be able to um, figure out who what the author is saying are there points of digression? Are there information that are being included? And are there things that you need to know for that? Just try as much as you can to listen and take note. I mean, I know it's, uh, it might sound like it's difficult, but once you practice and you take your time to listen and focus, you will do very well. My advice is um, if you listen to the webinars uh, or the live um, sessions on Zoom, just take your time after listening to those and try practicing the exam without timing yourself because you're trying to get, a, um, get used to the question format and the type of questions that you might get and the exam format at the same time. Once you, know, you get to a comfortable level that you're okay with the exams, then you can kick it off with time management, like start timing yourself, see how fast you can be able to... Um, finish your questions ahead of time. So with this, this is the end of my presentation for the listening test. Let me know in the comments if you have any question. 
please do like and subscribe and share with your family. I would love to host some of these sessions live, but because I haven't gotten to 1,000 subscribers, I may not be able to do that. Please help me to share this video to as many people as possible. All right, stay blessed. Wishing you good luck. Bye.